Good morning to do communion services. We want to just invite everyone to service. We want to say we miss you. We wish that we could be having our regular service the way we always do. But um, during times, things change. So we change with it. We want to say again, good morning and welcome to First Bryant. As we do devotional service, we're going to go ahead and let Deacon Chisholm um, start out with prayer and Deacon Ben will do a scripture. And then we have some ladies that's going to come and they're going to sing some songs. And we're going to go ahead and start our service. May we pray. Lord, we just want to thank you, Lord, for another day and time that you brought us out to Mother Brian, Lord, to celebrate the communion service for the fifth month of the, of the year, Lord. We just want to thank you, Lord, for all the blessings that you restored on us. We just want to thank you, Lord, for all that you've done for us, Lord. And Lord, just keep us safe through this period, this pandemic time we're going through, Lord. And we know that you will bring us back all back together one day, Lord. We just want to thank you for all that you've done. And Lord, we just want to thank you for going there, going on the cross and dying for our sins, Lord. We just want to thank you for doing that, Lord, because you made a way for us not to have to suffer on our own, Lord. I mean, we just want to thank you for that, Lord. And we just want to thank you for this community service, Lord, and for this day, Lord. This is a servant's prayer. Amen. Service scripture will come. Philippians 3, 7 through 16 verse. Philippians 3, 7 through 16. And it reads, But what things were gained to me, and those I count lost for Christ? Ye doubtless, and I count all things, but lost for the excellency of the knowledge of Christ Jesus my Lord, whom I have suffered the loss of all things. And do count them, but dug that I may win Christ. And be found in him, not having my own righteousness, which is of the law, but that which is through the faith of Christ, the righteousness, which is of God by faith. That I may know him in the power of his resurrection, and the fellowship of his sufferings, be made comfortable unto his death. If by any means I might attain unto the resurrection of the dead, not as though I have already attained, either were already perfect, but I follow after it that I may apprehend, that for which also I apprehend of Christ Jesus. Brother, I count not myself to have apprehended, but this one thing I do, Forgetting those things which are behind, and reaching forward unto those things which are before me. I press toward the mark for the prize of a high calling of God in Christ Jesus. Let us, therefore, as men as be perfect, be thus minded, and if in anything ye be otherwise minded, God shall reveal even this unto you. Nevertheless, word unto we have already attained. Let us walk by the same rule. Let us mind the same thing. Amen.
name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We thank God for being a keeper today. Amen. Now this song, just concentrate on the word. Ask God every day to keep us. Keep us in this care. And God has been doing that. He has graciously done that. Help us sing this song. Sing it as unto the Lord.
Right, we are preparing to do our communion, and so we will begin by reading the church covenant. Man, as the deacons bring the communion table. Amen. Church covenant reads this way. Having been led, as we believe, by the Spirit of God to receive the Lord Jesus Christ as our Savior, and on the profession of our faith, having been baptized in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, we do now in the presence of God, angels in this assembly, most solemnly and joyfully enter into covenant with one another as one body in Christ. We engage, therefore, by the aid of the Holy Spirit to walk together in Christian love, to strive for the advancement of this church in knowledge and in holiness, to give it a place in our affections, prayers, and services above every organization of human origin, to sustain its worship ordinances, discipline, and doctrine, to contribute cheerfully and regularly as God has prospered us toward its expense, for the support of a faithful and evangelical ministry among us, the relief of the poor, and the spread of the gospel throughout the world. In case of difference of opinion in the church, we strive to avoid a contentious spirit. If we cannot unanimously agree, we will cheerfully recognize the right of the majority to govern. We also engage to maintain family and secret devotion to study diligently the word of God, to religiously educate our children, to seek the salvation of our kindred and acquaintances, to walk circumspectly in the world, and to be kind and just to those in our employ and faithful in service. We promise others endeavoring in the purity of heart and goodwill towards all men to exemplify and commend our holy faith. We further engage to watch over, to pray for, to exalt, and to stir up each other under every good word and work, to guard each other's reputation, not to needlessly expose the infirmities of others, to participate in each other's joys, and with tender sympathy, hear one another's burdens and sorrows, to cultivate Christian courtesy, to be slow, to give, or to take offense, but always ready for reconciliation being mindful of the Savior in the 18th chapter of Matthew to secure without delay and through life and amid evil report and good report to seek to live to the glory of God who has called us out of darkness into his marvelous light. When we remove from this place, we engage as soon as possible to unite with some other church where we can carry out the spirit of this covenant and the principles of God's word. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. Let us pray. Oh, holy and mighty God, we thank you, we love you, we adore you, and we magnify your name. Father, in the name of Jesus, we ask you to guard us and protect us. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for giving your life for us. Because on the cross, you paid the price for our past, our future sins, and the sins that we don't even know about. But God, we thank you for giving us grace. We thank you for giving us mercy. We thank you for giving the endless love, Father God, that you have shown us, Father God. Even through this time, Father God, you're still with us. God, we ask you to bless the heavens, Father God. 
as we remember your blood shed, and we remember your broken body, that you did it all on the cross for us, Father God, that we could come to you boldly, Father God, unto ourselves, with our hands raised up, Father God, and our mind on Jesus, God. We thank you, God, for your son, Jesus, God, that he was raised up, Father God. He raised up so that we can be saved, Father God, that we may have the right to the tree of life. God, we thank you, God, for all your glory, for all your honor, and all your praise, Father God. Continue us to, let us depend on your word, Father God. Let us continue to have faith in knowing that you are with us and you will never, ever leave us, Father Bless us, bless this communion, bless those elements, Father God, that are not in this household, that are in the house, Father God. Bless us that it may be used, Father God, Father, to remember what you have done, that you died on the cross, Father that you, that you spread your arms wide, that you was nailed. But on the third day, Father, on Sunday morning, you rose up, Father God, with all power in your hands. We bless your name. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 I'm going to read to you from 1 Corinthians chapter 11, starting at verse 23, says this, For I have received of the Lord that which also I delivered unto you, that the Lord Jesus, the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, Take, eat. This is my body, which is broken for you. This do in remembrance of me. After the same manner also, he took the cup. And when he had supped, saying, This cup is the New Testament in my blood. This do it as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you do shew the Lord's death till he come. Amen. At this time, we will hand out the uh, communion. then would you take the bread and we'll follow the instructions of the Apostle Paul and thank God thank him for his body thank him for the bruises thank him for the stripes thank you God for healing and deliverance and salvation thank you that you were the perfect Lamb of God thank you God that you accepted this sacrifice for my sins, God. 
and we give you glory and honor and praise now. In Jesus' name, let us all take the bread together. The Bible says, in the same manner also, they took the cup and gave thanks. So, Lord, we thank you for this blood of Jesus. We thank you, God, that it has power to cleanse us from sin and to restore us, God, and to make us one with you. And, God, we pray now in the name of Jesus as we take it, God, that our mind is on you and our spirit is connected with you. In Jesus' name. Let us all drink together. Amen. Oh, 
worship this morning. Amen. I felt that and I know that people that are watching on Facebook, they felt that also. Amen. Amen. If you have your Bible then, I'd like you to turn to St. John chapter 15. And go to verse 5. Now, if you've been watching, you know already where I'm headed this morning. So, just pray with me now. I find all my spots. St. John chapter 15, verse 5 says this, I am the vine, ye are the branches. He that abideth in me, and I in him, the same bringing forth much fruit. For without me, you can do nothing. If any man abide not in me, he is cast forth as a branch, and is withered, and men gather them, 
and cast them into the fire, and they are burned. If you abide in me, and my words abide in you, you shall ask what you will, and it shall be done unto you. Herein is my Father glorified, that you bear much fruit, so that ye be my disciples. As the Father hath loved me, so I have loved you. Continue in my love. If you keep my commandments, you shall abide in my love, even as I have kept my Father's commandments and abide in his love. Amen. Let's pray. Father, in Jesus' name, we thank you this morning, God, for another opportunity to share your word. God, we pray now that every ear that's open, every ear that's willing to hear, God, will receive from you, God, the words from heaven. Lord, that you would bless me, God, to be able to hear and to be able to speak, God, with your spirit, with your direction, your guidance. Father, in Jesus' name, I surrender now all of me to you, God. Help us. Help me, God, to do and to share exactly what you want. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. I want to focus on this because we talked about for the past few weeks the true vine. We talked about the father last week or the gardener. And this week I want to maybe conclude this. I'm not sure, but um, talk about the branch the branches. Now, here's what verse 5 says. Verse 5 says, you are the branches. <laughs> he says, I am the vine, you are the branches. So we, we need to understand then that our role in this system of relationship with God, this, our part uh, that we play in the salvation of the world and, and, and even of our own souls as we are branches. And branches have some responsibility or some expectations. Because he places some expectation on the branches. But you got to look at them because when you look at them carefully, really, there isn't a lot of work we're doing. But we're receiving a lot. Look what he says about us. Basically, he says branches have to be submissive. Why? Because the scripture says... You can do nothing without me. In other words, if you're a branch, it's not your job to do things without God. The only way you can perform any act that's expected of the branch is if you are totally dependent upon the vine. And so he says, listen, branches, uh, my father is a husband, I'm the vine, and you can do nothing without me. Second thing, which is really important, it says, your job is to abide in me. Now, that's, a, that's an interesting thing. I had to look that up because I was thinking, abide in me. I looked it up and meant to stay with me and to wait on me and all that. But something more important than that, it says that branches should wait in a state of expectation. In other words, branches have to have faith that what they're connected to is going to do through them what is expected of them. Oh, man. Listen, y'all. And it's even better than that. I, I thought that the, that the branch was holding on to the vine. But when I researched it, I found out that we ain't even holding on to the vine. The vine is holding on to us. And so I don't have to worry about being, being knocked off the vine or... or, 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 or cut off from the vine because I'm not the one holding on to the vine. The vine actually has a hold of me. Abiding in the vine means that I stay with the vine, but I'm not staying with him completely by my own will. I'm submitting to him, and he's holding me by his own will. Now, that may not be good to you, but for me, that's some good stuff because I tried to hold on to my Christianity by myself. I tried to behave and keep God in my life through my behavior. But what I found out is you can't do it, but he 
had a hold of me. Hallelujah. <laughs> and he ain't never let go of me. And I know that's a struggle for some of us because we got a religious mindset and you think if you broke a law or you committed a sin that automatically God left you. But he didn't promise that he would leave you every time you commit a sin. He said, I will never leave you and never forsake you. I will hold you in my hand. And then he said something more important. Nobody can pluck you out. I like that. <laughs> I like that. I can't be plucked out of God's hand whether you like me or not. Whether you agree with me or not, nobody can take me out of God's hand. I will abide in him. And then he says this, if you abide in me and your word, his words abide in me, then I can ask whatever I will and he'll do it. That almost sounds dangerous to say that I can ask whatever I will but it's based on a principle that I am not only abiding in him, but I'm allowing his word to abide in me. Now, look, let's think, think about that word abide again. So here's what it's saying. If I let that word grab a hold of me and hold me, then God said, I can trust what come out your mouth because I have a hold of you and whatever you ask is going to be in line with my will. Hallelujah. So look, if you're a branch, remember this. You must abide. Se next thing, third thing, verse 8. Verse 8 says, Here is my Father glorified that you bear much fruit, so shall you be my disciples. Now here's a powerful thing about that. Actually, when you study it out, what that means is God has ordained you to produce fruit. That's, that's, that's good. <laughs> so now listen, some of y'all say, what's my ministry? Your ministry is to produce fruit because man is not made to make himself look good, but man has been made and created to glorify God. Here's what he said. Since you're here to glorify me, what glorifies me is fruit producing branches. So I've ordained you to produce fruit. Now, when you look at that word ordained, it's not your regular ordained, because see, sometimes when you talk about ordaining something, it means to stand up. But this ordination is prostrate. In other words, he's saying, I ordained you to produce fruit, but don't you stand up to be noticed. You bow down before me so that people will know that whatever you produce, it ain't about you, it's about me. Hallelujah. God is good because he ordained us, which means it's his responsibility to produce fruit in me. Wow. So I ain't got to go around making some kind of physical effort to produce fruit. What I got to do is bow down. What I got to do is bend my knee. What I got to do is come before him and say, God, I know what I am, but I know what you want to do in me and allow God to produce fruit in you. Now check this out. And some of y'all know this already, but what is fruit and why do we have it? Galatians chapter five. Let me turn there right quick. Galatians chapter five says this. Verse 22 says, but the fruit of the spirit is love, Joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, and temperance. So here's what the Bible is saying to us. It's saying that God ordains you. In other words, he took the responsibility if you will bow down to him and lay prostrate before him, he will produce through you these parts of the fruit. Love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, Faith, meekness, different. So here's what we got to quit doing. Quit trying to be good and allow goodness to come through you. Y'all hear me? Quit trying to love and allow love to flow through you because God ordained it in your life. Wow. Second thing, and it's a real not complicated thing because it's, it's, it's really a common sense thing. Why do we have fruit? Ooh, man. We got fruit for consumption, but not consumption of the branch. Fruit 
is there so that folks that are not connected to the vine can come and taste the fruit of being connected and cause them to want to be connected. That's why the Bible says, David said, oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Why? Because when you find a branch that's connected to the vine, that's bowed down to the vine and allowing the fruits of the spirit to flow out of it, when a person meets him and tastes the life that he has, it causes them to see what they're missing in their life and want God. Hallelujah. <laughs> I, I, I'm getting close now, y'all. Listen, listen, listen. Next thing. And I'll move to a different area. But the next thing, and I love this, it, it, in verses 9 through 13, it points out something. I started reading it, but I didn't read it all. It says, 9 says, As the Father loved me, so I have loved you. Continue in my love. That's the first thing. If you keep the commandments, you shall abide in my love, even as I have kept my Father's commandment and abide in his love. These things I have spoken unto you, Ooh, that my joy might remain in you and that your joy might be full. This is my commandment, that you love one another as I have loved you. Greater love hath no man than this, that a man lay down his life for his friends. Oh, <laughs> listen, y'all. The other thing that branches are responsible for is loving other branches. <laughs> that's good that's good for me so now here's what it's saying you, you just lay in there and he's holding on to you and you're producing fruit but he's saying don't pay attention to yourself or protect yourself your job is to allow him to use you and then you're supposed to look at other branches and hope that other branches are doing well your job is to love other brand. Matter of fact, he said, the only way I can tell if you actually a branch is if you love one another. Not because you fed the hungry, not because you prayed for the sick, not because you raised the dead, but just by the fact that other branches know you love them. <laughs> Some of us are so busy loving the world, we done forgot to love each other. Our identity is in our love. Here's what he says. He said, if you're going to be a branch, you need to learn how to love each other and not just love each other in the in, in the brotherly love sense eros but he's saying i want you to love them in the same kind of love that jesus loved us a got pale not just the social and, and well-being not just their moral well-being but sacrificial love in other words who this is good y'all because <laughs> here's, here's what he's saying he said, you need to love another branch so much that it's okay to cut some of you off so the other branch can grow. Because we're more concerned about the overall look of God than our personal look to God. Hallelujah. You got to be a branch that's so loving of other branches that you'll sacrifice your fruit. Hallelujah. <laughs> so that other branches can have fruit. Now, here's the problem with all this, y'all, because folks look at people that are branches, and sometimes, not sometimes, it exposes the branch to the elements of the world. And you keep reading in St. John, which I didn't read you, it says it's going to expose you to hatred. It says because they hated him, they will hate you. Because they persecuted him, they will persecute you. If you're going to be a branch, it's going to look so easy and so undeserving what you get because God actually makes it look like you're doing something. It's up to you to know on the inside that the only thing I'm doing is being held on to and supplied by the vine. He, he allows us to look like we're doing something, but he's saying, I don't want you to take any credit for it. Because this is not about you. And notice, it's going to cause folks to not like you. I remember when I was younger, and I didn't understand my position in God. And uh, I, I, got a, I, I got in some trouble a couple times. I know ain't none of y'all did that. But I, but I got in trouble a couple times. And, and I went to court, and, 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 and God got me out without records and, and got me out without punishment. And, and it got to the point where one of my friends said to me, 
They say, it don't matter what happened. You always get out of it. That's why I don't like you. And I thought, why would that make you not like me? But see, I didn't understand the favor and the grace of God that was on my life that people that don't have it, it'll cause them to dislike you or ask you how you got what you got. And this person responded, I hate you. And even tried to get me in trouble. Hallelujah. But God turned it on them. And he ended up asking me that I want to press charges against them. And they couldn't understand it. And I didn't understand it fully. All I knew is God is on my side. <laughs> Hallelujah. But let me tell you something. It's going to cause you to be exposed to hatred, to persecution. And, and I'm going to read another list to you that's going to cause you to be exposed to. And I'm not going to get into this list. I got to fight it. But you'll be exposed to the fruit of the flesh. So notice, even though you're full of the fruit of the spirit, you still are exposed to the fruit of the flesh. Which are these? Adultery, fornication, uncleanness, lasciviousness, idolatry, witchcraft, hatred, variance, emulations, wrath, strife, seditions, heresies, envies, murders, and drunkenness, and reveling, because this kind of stuff comes against you and you know in times past that God delivered you from it and if you stay in it, you can't inherit the kingdom. So know that you will be exposed. But now, here's the good part. Here's the good part. I need you to understand being exposed to all that and them seeing you produce fruit and knowing that you ain't nothing and that you wasn't nothing before you got in Jesus, that the reason they hate you ain't because of the stuff. It's because of some things he says in St. John 15. Let me share what he says. I'm, I said some of it, but I'm going to go over it. It says, you were chosen. Look at verse 16. Verse 16 says, you have not chosen me, but I have chosen you. <laughs> Look, this is irritating to know that God chose you. For folks outside of Christ, it's irritating to know that because they know you. They, they, they know your past. They know some of your mistakes, some of your successes, some of your failures. And they're trying to figure out, how are you better than me? But we're not. But because we're chosen, and the next thing it says, we are uh, ordained. And the next thing it says, we are the friend of God. The next thing it tells us, we are holy. The next thing it says, we are peculiar and we are a royal priesthood. That's Philippians chapter 2. Because of all those things, it makes people dislike you. Well, let me say it again. Because you've been chosen. Hallelujah. See, if you chose Jesus, then it would make you look smart. And it wouldn't be irritating because they would figure... Ain't no big deal. That's something you had an advantage. But it says he chose you. <laughs> okay. I, and then he ordained you. And then he befriended you. And then he made you holy. And then he made you peculiar. And then he turned you into a royal priesthood. And a holy nation. You are a blessing to the country you live in. To the house you live in. To the town you live in. To the community in which you work. You are a blessing and don't know it and wonder why folks hate you or don't like you. is because they see this favor on your life. And so we have to uh, be prepared for it. And so with saying all that, I, I just feel I need to do this. Because when I read it, you know, it will kind of make your head swell up. Because you're a branch. You're being held on to by God. You producing fruit that you ain't got nothing to do with. It's because of what's in the vine that's being put into the branch that's producing these wonderfully sweet grapes. And people are tasting it and saying, look, look at the peace that's in his life. Look at the joy that's in the life. Look at the love that's in the life. And, and they see it and it irritates them. And then to find out that you've been chosen and ordained and a friend of God and holy and peculiar and a royal priesthood just exacerbates the situation. But I got a humbling word for you. 
You've also been extracted so you can be grafted. And this is what you got to understand. As good as that looks, never forget that you were not originally connected to the vine. Romans chapter 11, verse 17. And I don't know if I'm going to read that. Yeah, I can't help it. Romans chapter 11, verse 17 says this, says, and if some of the branches be broken off and thou be in a wild olive tree were grafted among them and with them partakers of the root and the fatness of the olive tree boast not against the branches but if thou boast thou bearest not the root but the root thee thou will say then the branches were broken off that I might be grafted in well because of unbelief they were broken off and thou standest by faith. Be not high-minded, but fear. Read the rest of that chapter. You need to understand that. But here's what I want to uh, end with is this right here. Is that you have been grafted in. In other words, you were a part of another type of vine. A wild vine. A life separated from the true vine. Uh, a, a vine that didn't give satisfactory sap for you to really have life. And whatever it gave you was always temporary and seasonal, but you couldn't maintain joy and peace and love. And the weather and everything around you would change what's going on in your life. But he says, I took you off that and I attached you to the vine. Now understand graphing and then I'm going to finish. When you graft something onto the vine, there's a couple things that has to happen. The first thing is, you have to be severed from what you were. Hallelujah. <laughs> In other words, it's, it's not supposed to be easy, it's supposed to be painful. And not only is it supposed to be painful, it's supposed to expose what you were. When you were connected to that vine. Because whenever you cut a, a, a branch from an area, the, the juices, the sap that's in it are exposed and they begin to flow out. And, and if anybody understands, plant, most plants have an odor. And so when you cut it, you smell what the vine was. But here's what's good about God. He said, then he takes the vine and he cuts the vine. And so after he cuts the vine, its juices begin to flow. And then he takes the branch and he sticks it in the cut of the vine. And they wrap it in plastic or clay or mud so it'll hold it in place. And then they wait for it to heal. And when it heals, it becomes part of the new vine. Now, that, that, that's good in case, can, I, I, I got a couple more things and I'm going to end this, but listen. What's good about that is he didn't Change what you were. <laughs> you, you, you still were a vine from a wild branch, but he took what you were and attached it to the vine and allowed the vine to make you one with him. Oh man, y'all got to see this picture. So now listen, that's why you can't be looking at the other vines comparing yourself to the other branches because all the branches came from different vines. And God's power and God's ability is to take what was and put it into the vine and then make all the things that come from different places into one thing. Without losing their individual identity, they become one identity called the body of Christ. And so God gave us this picture and he did it on the cross. And here's what you got to see. He put Jesus on a stick like they do grapevines. And he stuck him up in the air and stretched his branches out. And they're laying horizontal while he is vertical. And then they didn't know what they was doing, but they, they cut him in the side. And when they cut him, if you read the scriptures, it says that the blood and the water begin to pull out of his side, which is his life fluids, 
Life is in the blood. Water is necessary for the body to live. And so Jesus' life fluids begin to flow out of his side. And then he says to you, cut Chris off the cocaine. Cut her off the prostitution. Cut him off the lying, off the stealing. And give him to me. And stick him right here where my wound is. Because I've been wounded for his transgressions. I've been beaten with strikes for his healing. And I am able to take what he was and turn it into good. Hallelujah. God is so good. I, I, I learned something. I, I, I told Reverend Milton, I said, it's going to be hard for me not to share it. But I'm going to end with this because I know some folks saying, well, not me. He can't do nothing with me. I ain't worthy. Nobody is. I read a scripture. And if this, if this identifies you, I want you to give your life to the Lord right now where you're at. The apostle Paul was on the road to Damascus. And he had letters in his hand to kill other Christians. And the Bible says a light hit him and knocked him off his horse and said something strange to him that I didn't really understand fully until I started studying his mind. He said, Paul, Paul, why persecuted thou me and kick against the prick? Now, in my mind, I always thought the prick was something Paul was kicking against hurting Paul. But that ain't what they're saying. The prick comes from the word engrafted, which means in pricked. So when the vine is in prick, that means it's engrafted. That means when the vine is cut, they cut into the vine and leave the wound open. Here's what he was saying to Paul. Paul, you, you, you are kicking me in my spot that I have for you. Instead of you attaching to me, you resisting what I did for you, Paul. I was wounded for you, and I'm trying to engraft you into me. Yeah, yeah. and some of y'all been kicking the prick. You've been kicking the cut spot. And God is saying, I didn't cut you off from the other stuff to lay you on the ground and let you die. What I did was I cut you off so I could take what you were and attach you to what I am and allow you to become part of the true mind and set all by yourself. If that's you, I want you to give your life to the Lord right now. All you need to do is tell the Lord, cut me, expose me for who I am. Expose me for the liar I am, for the adulteress, for the fornicator, for the thief. Oh, Lord, for the selfish person that you are, cut me, God, and expose me. But don't just leave me there. Grab me, God. Insert me into the prick. Wrap me up and seal me in the Holy Spirit until the day of redemption. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. If that was you, I want you to give your life to the Lord. If you're already saved, we are still looking for, somebody reminded me last week, we are still looking for virtual members that can become physical members, but virtual members that may stay virtual members. If you would like to be a member of this church, please email me at pastorpitman1 at yahoo.com. I will answer your email if it's about that. Amen? Amen. God bless you. We'll see you next week outside in the park in front of the church, 11 o'clock. Amen.